Hi! In this video, I'm going to show you how I've made this embroidered multi-strand bookmarker. So, let's get started! I want to start this project by embroidering the ladybugs. So I'm stamping out the ladybug shape. I'm using our Elizabethan stamp set. We have three and this ladybug is in two sizes. It's on the small and on the large. I'm stamping out a few uh, because at this stage, I wasn't quite sure which method of embroidery I wanted to use, what would look best, or for that matter, how many ladybugs I would want. I had an idea in my head. I'm also going to stamp onto some felt, just some ordinary craft felt. This is so that I can add a little bit of padding to, um, it turns out to be to three of the uh, ladybugs. So I can do a little bit of stump work as it were. The next thing that I do of course, is cut out these shapes that, from the felt. I'm cutting just a little bit inside of the line and I'm not cutting out the head, I'm just cutting the body bit. Also, uh, for one of them, I'm going to actually cut the two wings down the middle so that you there's, there's a depression is when I'm doing the embroidery. So as you can see, it's a little fiddly job. This is the one that I'm going to cut down the middle. Now what I do is I, I cut a little bit in from either side of that center line because otherwise it would just be two pieces of felt butted up next to each other on the embroidery and that would defeat the object. So basically what's getting cut is a little tiny strip from the center so that there will be a gap when I place this onto the uh, fabric and then embroider over it. That's my brilliant thinking. So here's the cotton stretched in a hoop. I've also drawn a very rough log sort of shape. And now the fun and fiddly part of putting the felt into place on the cotton. This really was so unglamorous. This is why you have not got the step-by-step -step of me doing it. I've decided on a large cross stitch to just sort of hold in each of those separate wings. As you can see on the one that I've already done, I've worked little tiny stitches around. So do whatever works for you. For me, this thing, these little tiny pieces kept falling off and trying to be graceful and they didn't want to film properly. Um, and I used pins and a little bit, you can use a little bit, tiny bit of glue. You don't want to do anything that's going to harden up the area too much, but you can use something to just tack it on there as well. Um, so yeah, this is, this is the bit that's probably ended up being the most difficult part of the whole project. I'm only going to pad out three of them. One of them I'm going to leave flat. The th thinking being as I would get some dimension on the finished piece. Here all of the little pieces of felt are on the ladybugs and now I'm going to pad out my log shape. I'm doing this really randomly. Just get something for the largest size, which I don't worry about whether it matches the pencil lines or not. And then I'm going to cut some smaller uh, pieces of felt that I can pad out. When you're padding anything for stump work, and this is also with gold work. Use the smallest pieces underneath and then the largest piece over the top, which will give a smoother top to the padding that you're using. So if you're doing any sort of felt padding, that's what you do. Hence my little pieces underneath and then the larger piece on the top. I'm just going to add some simple stitches to this. Um, I've done them at a diagonal as a thinking for how I'm going to do the embroidery over the top. So it's giving me a little bit of a guideline. And then going to begin stitching. 
Now the thing to remember is that these are all going to be cut out. So you want to make sure that your ends are well secured within the shape that you're actually stitching. So I've started with the heads of all of the ladybugs. And then I'm going to weave under the thread at the back for each stage to make sure that it stays within and doesn't get cut later. Here you can see that I've done the ladybugs and I've worked satin stitch over the padding of the log. I've also worked some random stitches in a darker thread over the log. This is for the raised stem stitch. Now to work this, I'm using a long length of thread. I've actually decided to use a variegated thread and then work back stitches in a line along the length of your shape. So the back stitch goes underneath those extra stitches on top of the satin stitch. Now these extra stitches can, for even more texture, can be quite a thick thread. Um, you just really, you can play around with this quite a bit to get different effects. It's a little bit fiddly to start off with, but once you get into the rhythm, it works just fine. So I'll go all along. I've decided to go start at the middle and work to either side, simply because for me that works better, but you could start at one side or the other. You, each row should be quite close to each other. And it does help if you always keep the needle at the same side of the thread otherwise you'll get a little V shape, but you have actually worked that satin stitch underneath. So if any of that shows through because you've, you've put the needle the wrong side, it doesn't really matter. That adds more texture, I think anyways. Each of the ladybugs I have stitched in a slightly different way. Um, the one with the divided um, wings, I stitched those horizontally, so into that division, which looked okay. I think close up, it looked a little odd. It didn't look quite as shiny as you would expect the um, ladybug to look. So the others, I actually just, I worked them um, vertically, so from the head to the tail. Um, again, if you start down the center, um, you can line up a little bit more easily. Uh, one of them, I actually made stitches down the center to try to give a little bit of that depression, even though I hadn't cut the felt. And then another, I just simply put a line of darker. And of course, I've put the spots in as well. So trying out different methods to see which ones actually worked and which I liked the best. So as you can see here, I'm coming back down with the back stitches. And this is where I think the variegated works very well for um, the log because you're getting a, a lot of random, obviously the random color and then you're, you're adding the texture and so on. So it really, it's a nice, it's very um, relaxing, just meander up and down while you're working. But of course it takes a little while so I won't keep filming the whole thing. <laughs> and here's the embroidery all complete. It's a lovely effect um, and really sort of gives that that sort of feeling of wood. So now I'm going to pop the embroidery out of the hoop and I'm going to place some lace starch on the back of the embroidery. You can also use our Kansashi starch adhesive watered down a little bit. So I'm going to go around the edges of each of the little motifs and also with the ladybugs I'm, I'm actually putting this onto the threads themselves. What this will do when it's dry is it, like any starch, it will stiffen up that fabric. 
And so it will stop it from fraying and becoming unmanageable because it's, they're tiny little pieces. And so this is just going to help to to make sure that I can do what I want to do with it without issues from the cotton fabric. Now it does make it stiff, which can mean that turning under the edges for the applique can be a little bit difficult. I will say now that if you have difficulty using this sort of method, you can always reactivate that starch just a little bit with um, a little bit of water. It'll soften up your fabric again, and then you can fold it under. So I'm just going around all the edges and any of the sort of places where I've woven under thread ends. And then I'll leave it to dry. Leave it to dry thoroughly. You can, um, you know, if you have your radiator on, you can pop it on there and it dries quite quickly. Um, if it's very cold, it will take a lot longer to dry. So now I'm going to work the bookmarker part. And I'm using an open lace of five bows from Take Five Bows Departed, my book uh, co-written with Elizabeth Benz on medieval writing. What you need to do is have two fixed points to measure out your loops. Finger loop braiding, we're braiding with loops of thread. So I'm just making quite a short one for this bookmarker, but you can make them as long as an arms you arms can spread for the tension singly. You can, with the help of someone else, work longer. And I'm measuring out basically five loops and I'm going to tie the beginning to the end so that they're fastened. So the knot side is the, the sort of waist side and then you have the loops on the other side. Now you've got to stop these loops from slipping. So what I'm going to do is show you a constrictor knot. So take a piece of thread, come over from the bottom right to the top left around your loops and then back down to create an X. Then take your, the end of your thread underneath that X. Hold on to both of the tails and pull. Tie another little knot and that will stop those loops from sort of moving up and down uh, while you're braiding. Now you need a fixed point for braiding, which I'm using one of the posts on the trimmings table. So to set up, I'm going to place one loop on the left hand on A, B, and C, so the first three fingers. And then on my right hand, B and C. Okay, so there's the five loops. Now, A right, so your pointy finger, is going to go through the two loops, so through B and C, to take the top of the loop, the bottom loop, the C left loop, and then you pull out your hands to get the tension. And then you repeat on the other side. So in order to repeat, you need to drop those loops down so that you free up your pointy finger or A, go through both of those loops, and then you take the C, unreversed is the term, so the top loop, that makes it unreversed. And then you drop the loops and carry on. And you just go back and forth repeating this motion. I will slow down again in a moment to show you what happens. And as you can see, I'm pulling my hands out and that is actually tightening the braid up at the top near the fixed point. It's a really lovely way of braiding. Um, and a very, very common method in the medieval period. And the, the recipes are from a medieval manuscript. So let's slow it down again. A right goes through B and C right to take C left unreversed. Drop your loops on C uh, on the left and then repeat again. 
Now, the interesting thing about the open lace is that what's actually happening is it's creating two braids, not one. And it is that unreversed motion, so taking, exchanging that loop from hand to hand from the top that's separating the braiding. So you can just about see it here. It will become clearer later on. If you just look up near that post, you can just see it's starting to divide. And so long as you take it in the right order, then it's going to carry on dividing all the way through. As you become practiced, you will become faster. And your tension is, you need to take care on your tension that it's not too tight, um, but at the same time, you don't want it too loose. So spreading your, your hands will take that tightening up the length of the threads. Now I've come right the way down and I always braid as far as I possibly can. Um, you can always compensate. You, you can see that you can't move your fingers out as far once you come down the length. Um, and you could stop here, it's not a problem. But I, I like to go as far as I possibly can. It's just a thing I do. But if you're going this low, remember to ease your tension a little bit so that it matches this end to the top end. As you can see, I've got two braids. So I'm just gonna cut that loop and then we'll finish off the braids with half hitches. You can just knot it. You can, there's a lot of different finishes that you can use, but I like a half hitch. So I'll zoom in here so that you can actually see what I'm doing. I've taken one strand and I've made it over into a C shape and I've come around the threads and then up through and that's it, it's tied. Another one or even three works a treat to help to fasten that up. And it's quite a discreet little knot, so it's particularly nice for a bookmarker. And again, on the other side, Now I'll just zoom back out again so that you can see the braid in full. See there's our constrictor knot at the top and then two braids coming down from it. So clever. Our medieval ancestors were quite brilliant. So the starch is now dry and you need to cut out each of the motifs leaving a small amount of a seam allowance. Um, not too much, but just trim right round all of the different pieces. I'm also going to snip the curves on the ladybugs because they will definitely need it. And the log won't necessarily, but it depends on what shape that you do. You may need to. Obviously, it's a little bit fiddly but it is made a lot easier by starching that fabric first. As you can see, we've not got little bits of the cotton fabric flo floating all over. So there's everything cut out. And what I'm going to do now is make that log shape into a three-dimensional log to sit on the top of the book. This is the essentially the book marker and it will hold um, the braids that we already made. So I'm just going to fold down the two ends. And then I'm going to stitch the top of the braid to the back of the embroidery. I'm not going all of the way through. And as you can see, I picked up the scissors. I was going to cut those loops. And then I thought, no, it'll, it'll stay stronger. It's less likely to be pulled out if I don't cut them but instead to make the stitches between the loops so that there's something um, a little bit more holding it in place. So I'm just going to stitch this to the back. As I said, I'm not going through to the front of the work at all. And round about center. I mean, you could be really medieval with this and put in lots and lots of these um, 
braids, the bookmarkers, the multi-strand bookmarkers from the medieval period were there to, to mark off like books of days and books of hours. Um, so different passages that someone wanted to read more than once so they would have their favorite passage there and further down and further down so they'd have quite a few strands running through um, and maybe to mark the gospels and so on so it's a nice way that you can um, use for journals for instance to mark off different places so now i'm just going to fold in the fabric edges and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the whole thing, sort of roll it in on itself to tuck those raw edges in. I'm not joining them up completely. The embroidery isn't wide enough to be able to do that anyways. But my intention was always I, I want to have the bottom of this log covered in um, a mossy effect, which I'll work with French knots. And so I'm not worried about some of this white fabric showing. I'm just going to do a whip stitch to tighten it all in. And when I get near the, the braids, I'm going to make sure that there's a couple of stitches through there just for extra measure so that those braids don't get pulled out. See, just a simple whip stitch going from edge to edge. And that gives that nice sort of three-dimensional stick log effect. And here is the log with all of those French knots. And I've finished the ends with some, um, just some back stitches. And I've started putting the ladybugs in place. I can't really do it under the camera because it's such close work. I'm using a matching thread and I'm tucking the fabric underneath. So basically um, a sort of needle applique where you needle tuck, you use your needle to tuck those edges under. And I'm just making small stitches. If you need to, because the piece is so small, you can go sort of from either side, a stitch on one side and then go under and work a stitch the other side. Also, if you have any space where there is a bit of a join, you can always go ahead and work some back stitches or a stem stitch, just anything really just to hide any of the joins that you might see. Um, just if anything is showing up, you can see I've just done that a little bit along the edge of that particular um, ladybug. And I will do the same with the head, as I said, but with black thread. Just take my needle to tuck under those edges. And so here's the finished book marker. I only ended up using three ladybugs out of the four that I embroidered because I lost one. <laughs> As you can see, the book marker sits nicely on the top of the book. And sorry about that out of focus. I confused the camera terribly. Thank you so much for watching. Do please hit subscribe, click like, leave me a comment. It all helps the channel. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.